Today, I'm gonna to show you the new ESP Home web tools that you can use to program our ESP32 and ESP8266 boards, as well as many other ESP devices. At the very end, I'm gonna show you a little practical example of what you can do with it once you get it programmed. So let's get started. All right, so let's go into our Home Assistant server here, and I'm gonna go into Supervisor and ESP Home. And you need to be on at least version 1.19 for this to work. So I'm on 1.19.2, which is fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and open the web UI. And on the web UI, I've got a couple of nodes here already. One is uh, not available and the other one is, is. So you can see the green bar here means that it's on the network and working. And this one means it's not. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna add a new node. So the first thing I'm gonna do Unlike the previous way I did this, where I installed uh, the ESP board or plugged the ESP board directly into the Home Assistant server, wherever that happened to be, in the closet, uh, under the stairs, in the wherever. Um, here, I'm just on my PC doing it locally, which makes it super nice. I'm going to plug in my ESP board uh, just into the, the USB port, and it's going to fire up with some lighting there. And I'm going to click plus down here. Click the little plus sign. And I'm going to pick or create a configuration name. Now, this is the name of the node that it's going to show up in Home Assistant. So give it a meaningful name. Uh, no spaces are allowed, but if you do a space, it'll auto dash it for you. So I'm going to call this one Office Node with a space. You notice how it puts a, a dash in there for you. And then I'm going to choose my Wi-Fi SSID and my Wi-Fi password. So we'll do that one and that password. And then we'll click on next and it's automatically going to figure out what kind of board you're trying to connect to. And you have to choose which port that this actually is plugged into. Uh, my computer has a COM port one, whatever happens to whatever that happens to be. Uh, and then, then it has COM nine. Now, if you're not sure which one of these ports is correct, you can unplug it and you notice that the port goes away and you can plug it back in. And if that's the port that shows up when you're when you're ready to go, then uh, that's the one you want to use. You want to select it then and click on connect. And now it's going to go through the process of provisioning and updating and erasing and all the stuff it does to put the ESP home uh, or to put the firmware on the ESP32 board. And this can take up to two to three minutes, depending on a, a lot of different factors. So we'll come back here in just a minute when this is all complete. Now you'll notice that it says here that it's installing this after it provisioned or set it up. And it says to keep this page open to prevent slowdown. So you wanna make sure you're staying on the browser tab. So you're essentially not doing anything while you're waiting for this day to happen unless you're on a different PC or a different window. But don't mess with this window while this is running so that it doesn't get interrupted and you have to start over. So we'll wait the two minutes and we'll be back in a minute. Now that it's finished, it's looking for your device on the network. So if you put your SSID and your password in correctly, then it will have gotten onto the network and you will get this configuration created button or box. We can close that out. Now you should have the new node showing up on your dashboard or your list here, and it should be green telling you that it is ready to go. So this was an ESP32 board there's no difference between the ESP32 and the ESP8266. Uh, so if I unhook or unplug this ESP32 board now, first of all, you should see that go red on the screen. And I'm going to take an ESP8266 board, and I'm going to plug this in as well. And we're going to provision this the same exact way and prove that it does the same thing. So now we have the 8266 board plugged in. I'm gonna add this board by clicking the little plus sign over here. Same thing, I'm gonna give this one ESP8266 demo and the same thing for the username and password. And off we go to next, connect. Again, it finds a COM port. This time it's a different COM port your COM ports are gonna bounce around based on your PC and hardware and all kinds of stuff. So it may be a different one. Again, if you're not sure if it's the right one, unplug it, plug it back in. If it goes away and comes back in this list, then you're good. And then connect. 
One thing I also want to make sure that I stress is that this is only as of this, as of this filming available in Chrome and Edge for the PC. It's, it's not available in Android yet, but that is something that is coming at some point. Uh, don't have an ETA on that, but you need to use Chrome or, or Microsoft Edge for this um, to work. And if you don't get the, the prompt for the COM ports or anything like that, you may have some driver settings or things you need to work on. All right, so this is gonna prepare for installation just like the last time. An 8266 board is a little bit smaller, so it won't take quite as long. It doesn't hold as much memory or hold as much uh, code, so it's gonna take a little bit less time to flash than the, uh, the W or the SP32. All right, now we're installing. This one says it takes a minute instead of two minutes. Again, because the ESP8266 doesn't have as much memory as the ESP32, the code base is smaller, et cetera, et cetera. So it won't take quite as long. You can also see on the 8266 that it's actually flashing the little LED there, something we don't see on the 32. Now it's fine, the device on the network, again, if you've got the username or the SSID and the password correct, then it should be okay to find it on the network. It's getting an IP address from your router and all that stuff. And of course we see configuration created, happy confettis and all that. All right, so I have the ESP8266 demo, uh, the office node I unplugged a minute ago and a couple of these other ones. So what do you do with this stuff now? So if we go over to ESP home, and if you're playing with this, chances are you know what you're gonna do with it. But there are, uh, at esphome.io, there are just dozens and dozens of different devices. ESP, the ESP boards are probably one of the most popular tinkering or um, just boards in general inside of, of projects or inside of consumer grade items. Uh, for example, the Sonoff uh, line of stuff uses the ESP boards. So what we have is we just have dozens and dozens of different things we can do with these. What I'm gonna show you now is I'm gonna show you just a quick temperature um, setup. And I, I did this on uh, one of my other videos, so it's kind of a rehash, but this little uh, Xiaomi uh, temperature sensor. So these are the Xiaomi Miha BLE sensors. And there's a whole bunch of these things. There's a soil sensor, um, more soil sensors, Hygro thermometers with a round body, the Hygro thermometer with a rectangular body, uh, this one, it just goes on and on. And this is the one we're talking about here. And what's nice is they give you the code, uh, configuration code to put into your ESP32 configuration in order for this to work. And all I have to do then, as I've noted in my other video, is I need to copy this and we'll go back over to our and I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch back out. I wanna do this on the ESP32 board because it's BLE and I need Bluetooth. The 8266 does not have Bluetooth, the ESP32 does. And that's again, why it's a bigger load whenever you uh, connect this up and flash the firmware. But if I go into my office node, which is this one right here, and I edit the configuration, all I have to do is paste that block of code down here. And you'll notice now that we get a, a, a little uh, X or a little uh, error notice here. And it says it requires the component ESP32 BLE tracker. All you have to do to fix that is just add the line here, ESP32 BLE tracker and in a colon. And that takes care of that because what that does is it tells the W or the ESP32 to use uh, the uh, Bluetooth low energy. Uh, part of the uh, firmware. Okay, and for those of you that are telling me that I already have my username and password displayed here, I had I mistakenly have done that in the past, but this is a new uh, <laughs> a new SSID and password that's only for filming videos. It goes off, gets changed, etc. So thank you for those that have told me. Don't worry about this this time. This gets disabled as soon as the video is done filming. So no big issue there. Okay, we've added this block of code. Now all we have to do is two things. Uh, now I'm not gonna go through and I'm not gonna go through and show that I, how I flash this. This is another video that you can look and I'll link that down below. Go watch the video on flashing that using the Telink flasher. 
but you have to set this uh, little device up for advertising, uh, me type advertising and some other stuff. You also need the Mac address from this. And I happen to know that the Mac address on that one that's sitting here is the F1 or F715 FD. The bind key doesn't matter because of the way I flashed it. Again, go watch the other video. And then I'm gonna give it some sort of meaningful name. I'm gonna say office temperature and office humidity and office battery level. And that's all you need now. Uh, the rest of the stuff we'll just leave alone for now. We'll save it, close it, and I'm gonna run a verify or validate on this to make sure it looks good. And it'll tell you up here whether it's validated. And it does tell me the, the YAML code is valid and I'm gonna install it. Now here's something new with ESP uh, Homes version is we can install wirelessly. We can install via the browser um, for devices connected to the computer. And we can install via the server for devices running uh, connected directly to the ESP or the Home Assistant server. Or you can just download it and put it in however you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and install it via the browser. And the reason I'm doing that is a little bit faster than wirelessly, but you can certainly, if you have this plugged in in another location and you're no longer connected to the computer, certainly do it wirelessly. I'm just gonna do the browser using the same COM port that we, we used a minute ago. And it's gonna go through, prepare it, and do all the stuff it did before and upload that to uh, the ESP32 board. Once it does that, it will create the sensors in Home Assistant, and then you should start getting information from the Xiaomi, Xiaomi, Xiaomi uh, hygrometer here into your Home Assistant. So we'll let that run a minute, do its installation, and come back in just a few minutes. Okay, as per usual, we have the installation part. It's finished preparing it. Now it's gonna install, and that will take two minutes because the ESP32 is a bigger load, has a Bluetooth load on it as well. So it's pushing all that up. So we will see you in a couple of minutes. Okay, so configuration is installed. It didn't go try to find it on the network this time. All it did was install it via the computer direct connection like we just showed on the COM port. So if we go now over to Home Assistant, actually, let's do this first. If we go to the logs, we should start seeing some activity uh, related to the BLE stuff that it shows up. Now you can see that it created these, these sensors, office temperature, uh, office humidity and office battery level. Once the actual this actual thermometer hygrometer updates and we have the MAC address correct, then it will start showing values for that down here in the logs. So we can watch the logs and the update intervals depending on what you set in the hygrometer, the thermometer, and that's something you can you can mess mess with in the firmware. Uh, so we'll let it uh, sit here for a second and see if we get a value. And if we do, we'll see that same value show up in Home Assistant. And now you see that we have our uh, Xiaomi device right here with the MAC address that I set. It picked up a temperature in humidity and it's gonna send those over to Home Assistant. So we can stop the log now and we can go into Home Assistant and we can look at the developer tools for office temperature and office humidity and see that it updated those. So here's our sensor office temperature, 77.7, .7, and humidity is 48%. So now you can take that stuff into Home Assistant and just build your dashboards and do whatever you want with it. Maybe something even similar to this where I have, um, this is one of these same setups in my, I have a computer inside of a cabinet and I wanna monitor the temperature of the cabinet inside so that it doesn't get too hot. So I have that here. And of course, if you see my video about the fridge temperature monitoring, I do the same thing with this. So that's a, a simple way to uh, do home or do uh, ESP32 using the web browser on your local PC without having to set this up and plug it into the Home Assistant server that might be hidden somewhere in a back closet. Makes it super easy. The interface has been improved. All of the provisioning is done for you in a single shot. You don't have to go back and add the Wi-Fi stuff later. Uh, and so it's very, very nice. Uh, it's a great addition to the ESP Home a family of tools that we use 
and a lot of us use every day to do a lot of different things in Home Assistant. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, put those in the comments down below. Hit me up on Discord. And if you liked the video, hit the like button, and we'll see you on the next one.